Hi, I'm Nicholas, and I studied at Kuo Chuan Presbyterian Secondary School, where I did my O-Levels and received an A1 for O-Level Pure Biology. I am currently a student studying medicine at Nanyang Technological University. I would like to take this chance to thank you for watching my videos, and I hope you can use this supplementary tool to boost your grades and understand the materials better. I would like to highlight that this supplementary tool is not meant to be a replacement for actual school content, and is merely a guide to help you understand the material better. Thank you, and let's begin. In this video, we shall be covering cells, cell structure, function, and organization. These are the learning outcomes for the topic, and you should be aware of them so that you know what you are meant to be tested on. First of all, we need to understand what cells are, and cells are the basic building blocks of life. They are able to carry out the functions of life, such as metabolism and digestion, reproduction, and hence are living beings. All living matter is composed of one or more cells, which are observable under a microscope. Cameras can be used to take micrographs, and you'll be able to see them later on in this video. Cell structures have different functions, and some of these structures are called organelles. You can think of these as organs of the body. Both animal and plant cells have similar and different organelles, and both cells contain protoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance, making up the core of the cell. Protoplasm is mainly made up of the cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus, along with organelles. Here is a diagram showing an animal cell and you should pay attention to and know the nucleus, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, cytoplasm, cell membrane, mitochondrion, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi body, and vacuole. We will be covering each of these structures in greater detail. For plant cells, you should be able to identify the large central vacuole, the cell membrane, mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi body, cell wall, ribosomes, rough ER, nucleus, and the smooth ER. You do not need to know the ameloplast. Functions of the organelles. Nucleus is a round mass in the cell surrounded by a membrane called a nuclear envelope and it controls cell growth and repair. It is also involved in cell division. The nucleus contains at least one nucleolus, which is the central core of the nucleus, and it contains the chromatin threads. This is learned more in future topics. The cytoplasm is the core jelly-like substance of the protoplasm and is where most activities occur and where most organelles are found. The cell membrane is a partially permeable membrane and it controls substances moving in and out of the cell. You should be aware that it is only partially permeable. The vacuole is a fluid-filled space enclosed by membrane and it stores substances in the cell. In animal cells, they are used to store water and food substances and hence are only temporary. In plant cells, they are large and contain cell sap. It is found in the central portion of the cell. The cell sap contains sugars, salts, and amino acids. The ribosomes are small round structures that synthesize or make protein. They can be found freely in the cytoplasm or can be attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesize protein that are transported out of the cell, while proteins synthesized by free-floating ribosomes are used within the cell. The Golgi body stores and modifies these substances produced in the ER and packages and transports these into vesicles for secretion out of the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, is a network of tubules and flattened spaces lined by a membrane. It is involved in synthesis of substances within the cell, as well as their transport. There are two kinds, mainly rough ER and smooth ER. The rough ER has ribosomes attached to its surface, which is what gives it its rough and grainy appearance and the rough ER is continuous with the nuclear envelope. The rough ER transports proteins made by the ribosomes to the Golgi body. Continuing on, the smooth ER does not have ribosomes attached and usually connected to the rough ER. The smooth ER synthesizes fats and steroids such as sex hormones in mammals and is involved in the detoxification of substances. The mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because it is where aerobic respiration occurs. Food is oxidized to release energy for the cell's use, and it is surrounded by a double membrane. The mitochondria also contains its own DNA. The chloroplasts are found in plant cells, and they contain a green pigment chlorophyll. They are involved in photosynthesis to make glucose. Like the mitochondria, chloroplasts have their own DNA. The cell wall is found in plant cells, and it surrounds the entire cell and its membrane. It is made of cellulose and helps to give the plant a fixed shape. Unlike the cell membrane which is partially permeable, the cell wall is fully permeable. 
Here is a diagram showing picture micrographs of animal cell structures. You should be able to appreciate the nucleus, cell membrane, and cytoplasm, which can be seen clearly in these images. You may not be able to see the mitochondria or Golgi body because a higher definition is needed. In a higher magnification, we can clearly see the mitochondrion overlaying part of the rough ER. It appears as a rod-shaped structure with folds. And we can see here that this is the central nucleus with its nucleolus, as well as the nuclear envelope surrounding it. The nuclear envelope has pores, which are called a nuclear pores. And as discussed, the rough ER is a continuation of the nuclear envelope, hence it is found right beside it. In this image, we can also clearly see the mitochondria, as well as the nucleus. The Golgi body is a section of flattened sacs which are observable somewhere near the nucleus. The centrioles are structures involved in cell division and you will come across them in future topics. Here's a quick comparison of animal and plant cells. In animal cells, the vacuoles are small and temporary, while the plant cell has one large central vacuole. Chloroplasts are absent in animal cells while they are present in some plant cells. In animal cells, the cell wall is absent and in plant cells, the cell wall is present. Cell structure is strongly related to function. As cells differentiate and carry out different tasks, the cell structure must change as well. In plant root hair cells, for example, the root hair cell is long and thin. And this increases the surface area to volume ratio, which is an important concept, which we will cover in future videos. Hence, water and important salts can be absorbed into the cell from the soil much more efficiently. As shown here, the long extension of the root hair cell allows it to absorb water and minerals more efficiently into the cell. The plant xylem vessels are long and hollow tubes made from xylem cells, and the function is to transfer water and mineral salts. These cells do not have protoplasm, and hence there is less resistance, so water is able to move freely through an empty space called a lumen. Lignin is a protein deposited in the walls of the xylem to strengthen the wall and provide mechanical support. Here is an image showing the xylem. As you can see here, this is a xylem cell in the transverse section, and we can see that there is no protoplasm which allows water to flow freely through this empty lumen. The thick wall here contains lignin, which can be shown in this spiral-shaped protein. Lignin coils upwards around the cell wall of the cell and helps provide support. Another example is red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin. A hemoglobin is a red protein which transports oxygen in the blood. There is no nucleus present in the red blood cell. Hence, it can carry more hemoglobin and more oxygen, which is fitting for its role of oxygen transport. The biconcave shape of the red blood cell also increases the surface area to volume ratio for faster rate of diffusion of oxygen into and out of the cell. This is a red blood cell. As you can see, there is no nucleus, so more hemoglobin can fit into it and more oxygen can be transported. The side view of the red blood cell shows its biconcave shape. You can see the cytoplasm with large amounts of hemoglobin proteins represented by the dots. The shape gives it a large surface area to volume ratio for oxygen to diffuse in and out of it. Cells each carry out their functions, and when cells work together, they are known as a tissue. A tissue is a group of cells that work together to carry out specific functions. For example, the epithelium is a tissue. It is a layer of cells that covers body surfaces such as skin and inner lining of small intestines. The muscle is another tissue and is a group of muscle cells that contract and relax to cause movement. Here we have an image of muscle tissue. You can clearly see each nucleus of a muscle cell. Each nucleus represents the nucleus of a muscle cell and hence all of these muscle cells work together to form a muscle tissue and allow contraction. Simple tissues are cells of the same type while complex tissues are cells of different types working together. For example, the connective tissue in humans and vascular tissue in plants. Tissues combine into organs which are structures made up of different tissues to carry out specific functions such as the stomach, which is an organ containing glandular tissue, muscle tissue, connective tissue, and nervous tissue. The leaf is an organ containing palisade mesophyll tissue, spongy mesophyll tissue, xylem tissue, and phloem tissue. Organs work together to form organ systems, such as the digestive system, which contains the stomach and intestines. Thank you for your attention.